John was sent home and now was aboard the John A. Warden, as he was debriefed. John, you were able to produce that many in just three months. Pietro, oh pish posh with the amount of resource headed our way with our trade agreements and surge in manpower due to giving many poor people in mantle well-paying jobs, along with the discoveries we made in abundant material. The SDC lending its dust support. We are now capable of fielding massive army compared to our two capital assault ships. Whitley, don't fail to mention that your father also had merged the entire Atlas forces with the Mobile Infantry and Fleet Command. Pietro, imagine all that raw material after James had half of the Atlas warship scrapped and repurposed to build more capital assault ships and fast attack ships. Penny, he kept half for security purposes, but when our factories finished producing the replacements, he had the other half for resource. John, so the Atlas army is no more? Penny, affirmative we are now one standing army as the Federation with two cities, Republic City and the Kingdom of Iron. John, Iron? Whitley, it was an honor for you. And your will of iron. John, wow, just wow. So how many are in our command? Penny, so far we have 10 capital ships and 50 fast attack ships. John then sat down. John, holy crap. Winter entered and was shocked to see her old friend alive and well as she walked to brace him as he welcomed her back into his life. Winter, what is wrong with you? You had us all worried to death. And don't think you're off the hook too. Your mother, my mother, and your dern will pummel you for all that. He then shivered. Winter. Oh, and Whitley, you're back as Admiral. I've assigned myself to SAS 03 Ironwood. Whitley, good luck then, sis, I'll miss you. Winter. There's the communication screen has a purpose. Whitley. Yeah, but I'll miss having you around. Winter broke formalities and hugged her little brother. Winter, I'm so proud of you, Whitley, and best of luck to you all. Now, if you'll excuse me, she leaves to take command of her ship. John, so before I get sent to my imminent doom, do I need to know more? Whitley, well, there's a new fort created as a staging area and wall for Atlas and Mantle. John, please tell me they didn't name it Castle or something so dumb. Whitley, your parents named it after you. John, huh, cool. Anything else? Pietro, well, Penny and Whitley are currently in relationship. Whitley, Pietro, Penny, Papa, he just laughs at their reactions. The doors open to reveal his mother and father. Robin quickly walked up to him in tears, but stopped in front of him as her he lair shadowed her eyes. John, Mom. She then smacks him upside the head and hugged him hard. Robin, don't you ever do that to me again. You hear me, you little idiot. John just returns the hug. It was James' turn to walk to him as he looks his son dead in the eye. He then embraced his family as he finally he released his pent-up grief. John, I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry, Dad. James, no, I'm sorry, son, for everything. They all just stayed that way for half an hour. Robin, if you dare try that stunt again, you're grounded until Hole had his wife. John, duly noted. Then the door screeched open as someone forcefully opens them with her bare hands, as they all look to a girl with menacing aura. James, son, I suggest you run. Robin, run like hell. John then speeds by as he ran for his life. He saw his end as he was eventually cornered. Elm had her arms placed on each side near John's head on the wall as he was backed into eye. He was sweating looking at Elm's unwavering gaze. It eventually stopped as it was replaced of her crying. Elm, how could you leave and die on us? On me. I thought I lost you forever. John, I'm sorry, but it was my life or everyone else's there was no map. Elm, you selfless idiot. She then kissed him as he was shocked, but he just let it happen accepting her feelings. Elm, are you? John, yeah, I love you. They kissed again and they stayed like that for a while. The day finally passed as everyone welcomed their beloved general back. A few days later, War Room. Ashben, we asked Jin again on how to destroy Salem and the Relic of Destruction has the power to do it, but we still have yet to find the Summer Maiden. James, but we have an answer on how to deal with the Grim. Crow, shoot. James, if we are able to destroy the spawning pools, we will be able to deprive Salem of her army. 
As Jin revealed those are the only source of Grimm as Salem lacks the power to make them herself. Glinda, so we will need the Federation's entire Havoc supply. Pietro, we are ready and have produced as many as possible during the time frame given to us. Whitley, since the target zones are not inhabited by any innocent civilians, we are free to drop as many as we can. John, for that the fleet will lead the assault as we drop the payload. But to be sure after the drops, the mobile infantry will mop up the remaining Grim on the ground. Ashpin, me and my circle will handle Salem's remaining council. And cut at the head of Snake. Crow, take away her pawns and allies shall be left alone, no matter how powerful she is. She is just one which against an entire world. Ashpin, when she's alone, we will prioritize searching for the Summer Maiden and getting the relic. John, then it will be over. Ashpin, all in favor? Everyone, aye. The Federation then launched its all-out assault. John, do you apes want to live forever? Mobile Infantry, N-O-S-I-R. John, I'll see you on the bounce. Mobile Infantry, Hua. It was a matter of debate, but due to the vast amount of grim within the land of darkness, any infantry assault would be insane. But with precise targeting and massive amount of havoc payloads, they were able to destroy almost all of the grim pools. The mobile infantry then followed up and systematically wiped out the remaining Grimm. And the war was raging until only Salem remains without any Grimm, she was just one angry old lady stuck in her tower. And Remnant remained peaceful all thanks to the hard work and sacrifice of the Federation, the fleet, and the mobile infantry.